Hey everyone, my name is Damien and welcome back to the channel as we continue making progress on the R34 Skyline that's also known as the poor man's GTR also known as the car that should have been done by now but is taking forever but that's alright, we're getting there slowly in today's episode we're going to be talking about people's favourite part of the build and it's talking parts, what went on the car, how much it was paid for it and I'll also run you guys through um, why we chose those parts as well and that alternatives do exist. You don't always have to pay top dollar to get something that is half decent. So yeah, that's what we're gonna be doing today. And a bit of fabrication. So to start the episode, we're gonna be throwing the engine along with the gearbox in the car to make sure that everything is nicely in position. So when we go to fabricate all the parts for the car, such as the intercooler pipes, dump pipe and exhaust system, nothing really shifts or changes. Everything is supposed to be where it's supposed to be. So we're gonna start off by mounting the front mount intercooler. Now, it wasn't even worth being buying a second-hand GTR intercooler. This is a direct replacement for all Skyline GTR cars that I found on eBay for $288 brand new. It's black, nice and stealthy, so that's what I decided to buy. So I hope this whole video isn't just me talking, but I do want to share my experience and let you guys know what I would do differently. Um, so we're going to start off with the fabrication. The next day came and I started off by grabbing our straight um, stainless steel tubing or piping, whatever you may call it, and I put it into the drop saw and started cutting up pie cuts. Pretty much once you have enough pie cuts, you join them together and you get nice tight radius bends that you can use to fabricate your intercooler pipes from, dump pipe, exhaust system, whatever you may use it for. So the main reason we did it this way was we thought it was going to be more efficient and effective. How the deal was is my friend Dan would come in, he would do all the fabrication work and most of the wiring on this car and I would prepare his R34 Skyline, I'll put it in primer and get it to a stage where it's ready for paint. So it was like a favor for favor deal. So pretty much all I had to do was cover the cost of the material and the gas. So we figured, all right, let's go for the lobster back or pie cut look thinking well all we have to do is buy straight tubing and then we can make the bends ourselves now unfortunately this was not the case it was very very time consuming which meant we used a lot more gas and to start off with we overpaid for the for the pipe or the tube so that wasn't a very good start to it and when i had a look online to be honest the bends would have been a hell of a lot cheaper and would have been a hell of a lot quicker, saving us time and money in gas as well. So if I were to do it differently, we would go straight to the bends instead of using the pie cuts.
Alrighty, so next up, we're gonna move into the engine bay and talk about probably people's favorite part of the car being the turbo. This is gonna allow the naturally aspirated motor to make a little bit more power. It's gonna produce a lot of cool noises. And this one specifically is a Kinagawa GT3582. It's got a small little rear housing on it. I'm not exactly sure what size it is. I'd have to get it measured up. Um, it's nothing over the top fancy. It's probably considered a older generation turbo at this point. Uh, Kinagawa has their GDX range. Obviously you've got your Garrett's, your Precisions, but unfortunately none of those cost $700. This one popped up on Facebook, brand new, never used, with the 90 degree elbow welded on for 700 bucks, so it was definitely a no brainer. Pick that up. Uh, for what we're trying to do with the car, nice, fun little street car um, that doesn't cost a lot of money. This ticks all the boxes, and I've never really heard bad things about them. It's oil and water cooled, so that's the turbo done. So next up and moving down, we're gonna be talking about the turbo exhaust manifold. Obviously it's aftermarket since the turbo is sitting up here instead of being low mounted like they are from factory. This is something I really, really advise not to cheap out on for multiple reasons that we're gonna to get to, but this one is specifically made by Six Boost. I'm pretty certain they're made in Australia from Steampipe. They're also an equal length runner design, I think. Man, this whole talking to a camera thing is tiring. Um, yeah, it was 900 bucks, it was brand new, came in the box. A dude that follows the show didn't end up using it on his project, R34 Skyline. So I ended up picking it up for a couple hundred bucks cheaper than what they are online, which is great. If you wanna go down the cheaper route, you can do it a few ways. You can do the standard exhaust manifold, which is made out of cast iron, keep the turbo low mounted, but you're gonna have to buy yourself a spacer if you wanna fit a turbo this size or a little bit bigger. And the reason you have to get that spacer is to space the housing from hitting the actual engine block. That's one option. Now the disadvantages with that is, is the cast iron manifold is a very shit design. They, you're never gonna get your car to sound right no matter how good your turbo or exhaust is. And you start pushing a little bit more power, heat and boost through it, you're most likely going to crack it as well. And then if you wanna go for an external wastegate, you're gonna have to weld something on the back of your housing or the actual manifold itself, which is also an added cost along with the spacer. Next up, you've got, if you wanna have your manifold up here, you can get a China stainless steel exhaust manifold, something I really don't recommend. Usually the design of them isn't that great. Again, the, t the car's not really gonna sound as good as it can. And also being thin wall stainless and poor welds, it's gonna most likely crack on you. You're gonna have to take it off in your engine bay. You're gonna scratch everything up. It's gonna be an absolute nightmare. So again, if you can stretch your budget out a little bit more, buy something as quality as the Six Boost or thereabouts, I uh, definitely would recommend doing it. The Silvia, the, my S14 Silvia has a low mount T28. It's a standard turbo, but it's also running a Six Boost manifold. Both Harry's and Danny's S15s also run Six Boost manifolds. They just make the car sound right, even though the Silvia has a tractor motor SR20, but for some reason, it sounds half decent. So if we go even further back, we are looking at the wastegate. This one specifically is made by Teal or Tile, however you may pronounce it. I'm pretty sure they're made in the USA. Unfortunately, I couldn't find this on Facebook for a good price. So I think I paid 600 Aussie dollars for it from a local supplier. And the model of it is MVI, I believe. It comes with all the V-bands and springs that you need to interchange, um, depending what boost level um, you'd like to run. Obviously, we're gonna dive deeper into that as we get to that stage and as the tuner also educates me about all that. But yeah, the reason I chose this wastegate was Danny's got it on his S15 and also my friend with that GTR that I was saying, he was also running the same manifold, similar turbo and exact same wastegate. That thing sounded mental, so we're just, again, just trying to replicate what he did.
So moving even further back of the car, we are looking at the custom dump pipe. My friend Dan built this from scratch, from pie cuts. He did an absolutely amazing job to make it fit the car. Probably again, another one of my favorite parts of the car. And what it does, it goes from a three inch V-band from the back of the rear housing and flares into a three and a half inch dump pipe and continues into the three and a half inch exhaust system that we're gonna get to. Uh, I was told the more air you can get out of the back of the turbo, the better. I know um, one of my other friends, he's running a four inch dump pipe, but for what we're doing, three and a half will be more than enough. So that is the dump pipe sorted. Let's quickly jack up the car and have a look at the exhaust system. So with the car up in the air, we are looking at the exhaust system that's on it. Obviously this exhaust tip will get polished up with all the surface rust removed. But anyways, it's a full R33 GTST X-Force 3.5 inch stainless steel exhaust system. It was $150 and to be honest, it's a really, really good deal because all we have to do is modify this little section right here and it fits the car perfectly. Dan did all the work. Um, yeah, so it's got a rear muffler and a middle muffler. To be honest, you can't even buy mufflers that cheap. And to have most of the exhaust route the right way around was an awesome start. Then we've got our decap pipe. This thing is huge, so it's got plenty of room if we have to put a cat in there one day with some flanges. And we're going into our flex joiner and the custom dump pipe that goes all the way to the turbo. We still need to fabricate up the screamer pipe. But other than that, that is our exhaust system. It's gonna be nice and quiet and it should give the car a nice note. Um, keep us out of trouble from the police and one day when I can afford a nice titanium exhaust we'll throw on the car. So with the car back on the ground again we are looking at the intake manifold, fuel rail and throttle body. Now this is something that I probably least trust on the car. I paid 700 bucks for it, saved myself a couple hundred bucks compared to ordering it online. I'm not going to say what company made it. If you see the car in person you'll probably see the lettering that's on it. I might even rub this out to be honest. Ah, uh, nope. That doesn't rub out. But a lot of other companies um, resell this kit. It's a, it's a kit that's made in China, quite generic I'd say. It bolts straight to the RB25 cylinder head, which was one of my biggest pros. That's probably one of the main reasons I bought it. It looks somewhat decent, but I was advised by multiple reputable workshops and friends to stay away from these that they do crack on top and also where the idle air control motor bolts up. So we'll give it a shot. I don't think this will stay in the car for long enough and I don't think the engine will be producing enough boost for it to actually crack. But um, yeah, just a heads up. I don't wanna um, lose, I guess, the trust between me and the viewers saying that a product is good, then you go out and buy it and it fails on you. So just a heads up, it might work for some people, it might not work for others, but yeah. So for the people that have been following this rebuild series from the beginning, you guys can definitely tell that I haven't spent too much time in front of the camera talking to the camera for multiple reasons. I don't feel very comfortable doing it yet. And also I like to get a lot of work done on the car itself. So when I go home, I can just start editing the footage and try and make a decent video out of it. But as the um, following continues to grow, more and more people seem to really want more details about everything. So we're gonna have to push videos of this style as well, along with the cinematic videos where we actually make progress. Um, so yeah, when I talk about prices, this isn't me bragging how much is being spent on the car. We all know that project cars aren't cheap. Some are more expensive than others. But I just wanna show you guys that alternatives do exist. You can find cheaper, uh, cheaper parts that will do a similar job to the more expensive parts. I guess that answers that and in the next episode is the next episode will be a working episode where we're going to get a lot of work done on the engine and it's transforming the gunky old RB25 Neo DE into what you see in front of you today and to finish this episode off I would love to give a massive 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 thank you to Dan Follow him on Instagram, he's also got a poor man's GTR, and rumor has it, he's also going to be doing the all drive conversion. So definitely um, send him a few messages saying, you gotta do it, we'll film it, that's not a problem. The guy spent a lot of late nights, one, two, three, four in the morning after work, and going to work the next day, um, trying to fabricate this car up and doing all the wiring. So a massive thank you goes out to him. Hope you guys have enjoyed this talking video, and We'll see you in the next one very shortly.